Hi, Ben Johnson here to record this week's High Tech Friday. This week we take a look at a nice add-on called Doc Appender. Um, to uh, learn more about it, you should go to the New Visions Cloud Lab. Just Google that and you'll get to uh, Andrew Stillman's awesome website where he has all kinds of great add-ons that you should check out. The one we're going to look at today is Doc Appender. Now, how would you learn about these add-ons if you didn't know about them already? Well, I would recommend that you join a Google Plus group like Google Apps for Education or something like that. Then if you had some need, you could just post it on their site. And eventually somebody would write back that you should use this particular add-on. So that's how I learn about most of my add-ons is through uh, Google Plus and uh, Google Apps for Education. So how to use uh, Doc Appender. There's a few ways that it can be used. Um, what I'm going to recommend, the first way is uh, just to give you an overview, people love their Google Forms and their Google Spreadsheets. Uh, the only downside is that sometimes uh, those spreadsheets are not very friendly to read. And so Doc Appender takes the data from the Google Form and puts it into a nice pretty Google Doc. And so if you wanted to do like a note card at the beginning of the quarter to get some data from students and you wanted it to look pretty more like a traditional note card, you would then run Doc Appender to uh, collect the student data. So um, how does it work? What you want to do first is make a new folder. So you'll go new folder in your Google Drive and you will just call it uh, note cards and I'm going to put the number two behind this one because I already have one. So you're going to make a folder and uh, here it is not note cards to go into that folder and you're going to need to make at least one um, document that's going to hold the uh, answer. So I'll just go new Google Doc. And maybe I want to do these by period, so maybe I would go ahead and make a document called P1, and that's going to hold all of the P1 responses. Okay. Um, maybe I would make a new Google Doc and call this one P2. Now you don't have to have more than one, but you're welcome to have as many as you want, so I'll just call this one uh, P2. And my internet's being a little slow at the moment. All right, so uh, again, first step, make the folder, in this case, note cards too. You can call it whatever you want. And then put some empty uh, Google Docs in there, but title them in a way that would make sense to the students because eventually these are going to become a drop-down list that students are going to pick from. Okay, all right, so now that you've done that, now you're ready to go ahead and make the uh, Google Form itself. So again, you would just go New more Google Forms. If you've uh, converted to the new form, you're probably going to need to revert back to the old one by clicking on the running man down here so that um, you can use add-ons because I don't think they're yet working. So you'll need to go to add-ons and uh, get add-ons and you're going to search for doc, um, doc appender. Looks like this. I've already added it. You'll need to add it uh, yourself. Okay. Now, uh, in this case, you would just uh, make the form just like you would make any other form. The main difference here is that um, you're going to need to ask a question that students will uh, use to uh, select which Google Doc they're going to be populating their answers onto. And so in this case, it's just going to be the period because I put period 1 and 2 in there. It could be student name, it may be different things. Okay. Now in that case, I'm not going to fill this part of the multiple choice out because it's going to automatically create itself in a second. You'll see this is kind of sort of magical and hopefully it'll make sense when you see it in a second. Then I might ask for students to fill in things like their name here, um, hobbies, the sort of thing that you would ask students at the beginning of the quarter. Um, maybe what music you like. Anything you want. Maybe some questions about the subject. Um, that sort of thing. Anyway, I think you all know how to make a Google form. That's not really the point of this one. So at this point, once you've finished uh, writing those questions, then you're just going to go ahead and uh, go to add-ons and you're going to turn on that doc appender open sidebar. And this sort of makes a, a wizard over here. And um, first thing you have to do is pick the folder where the Google Docs live that you're going to be populating. So I'll just say pick from drive. 
and then here's where you can just search either search for or if it happens to show up just select that now you don't go in and select the actual Google Docs that are in it you just select the root level of the folder and hit select so um, the app appender is smart enough to know that um, it's going to be populating this uh, based on the docs that are in it and so that's um, what you have to do next is uh, refresh the list and um, we have to tell it hey um, use this period question to know which Google Doc to populate and so then we'll hit the save and populate selected questions and you can see that it just sort of magically pulled P1 and P2 here now if I had 3 and 4 it would have also done that um, if you add 3 and 4 to that folder later you'll just need to return back to this wizard and hit uh, save and populate selected question again and those will magically appear on their own so this part um, I think is a little confusing to people at first because they're it's just not usually what you would expect but that's what the appender does so in other words we're just telling this form to send if they select this period one they're gonna send their note card to that period one Google Doc if they select this radio button it's gonna send their data to the period two Google Doc. Okay, and then I'll hit next. You can choose which um, questions to put on that Google Doc, probably most of them. Um, the only one I'm going to leave off is a timestamp. And then you select the format, and it turns out vertical tables is, is typically what people will select, but you can look at the others. Bullet of the list is nice also. Horizontal you probably wouldn't use, but uh, maybe there would be a case that you would want to use it. It, that kind of makes it look like the spreadsheet again, which is sort of the reason that you're using Doc Appender. So, anyways, then I'll just hit enable. And at this point, um, I'm ready to send my students to begin filling this out. So, I would just go to uh, View Live Form. Now, you may want to uh, post this in your Google Classroom or make a uh, short address for it. And so the, the URL shortener that I use is, is bit.ly, but you can use your favorite one. And then you're just gonna paste that long form address there. Uh, choose your own, own form here. And so I just did bit.ly HTF note card six, and uh, I'll just go ahead and go there and fill that out. So I would just maybe write that on the whiteboard. Students are going to go here, and my period one students are going to uh, fill the, this out. And then they'll just submit that. And then another student might go to that and type in her name. Now, because we set up the doc append, those are going to magically be going into this period one, which is what I just filled out. And I didn't have to do anything, just did that automatically. And as more students fill this out, their, um, their note cards are just coming up below, below here. So what you end up with is just a, usually a document that's much more readable than um, the spreadsheet itself. Spreadsheets are not terribly uh, reader friendly. So that that's the goal of this first type. And then I'll go ahead and show you another way to use it in the uh, next little screen case.